Amen, amen. How many of y'all know Jesus is here this morning? Hallelujah, hallelujah. How many of y'all are ready for the word of God? Come on, put those hands together and we receive at this time our pastor, Pastor Juan Richie. Hallelujah. Come on and give God praise in this place. If the Lord has done anything for you, you ought to stand to your feet and give him praise in this place. Hallelujah. I'm glad that God took me just as I was. Hallelujah to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords, to he that was and is and is to come. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth adore him and angels bow down before him. He's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. Our God is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We give the we give the God of the Bible glory on this morning. If it had not been for him who was on my side, you ought to make it personal. If it had not been for him who was on your side, where would you be? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like to say that in this world that we live in with everything that we see going on and everything that we see going on in here, outside, I'm more encouraged now, Brother Rockbar, than I have ever been to continue to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. You might think I'm down, but I'm more encouraged now than I've ever been. That I will not shut up. I will continue to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. How many are encouraged on this morning? How many are really excited about the Lord? Hallelujah. 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 I'm encouraged. The song says, I'm encouraged to walk with Jesus. Yes, I am. I'm encouraged to walk with Jesus. Yes, I am. Through hard trials, tribulation, persecution, I'll be faithful. I'm encouraged to walk with Jesus. Yes, I am. Why are you encouraged to walk with Jesus? Are you really encouraged to walk with Jesus? Musicians, are you encouraged to walk with Jesus? My deacons, my mothers, my preachers, my lay members, are you encouraged to walk with Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Daughter-in-law, I'm encouraged. Come what will, come what may, I'm encouraged. Never before. I'm in courage. I'm in courage. Hallelujah. People are falling. People are falling by the wayside. People are backsliding in church. You hear what I'm telling you? We ain't talking about the world. People backsliding in church. But I'm encouraged. You ought to be encouraged. John P. Key said, reach up and tie a new knot. Hallelujah. Holly now I know it ain't nothing y'all done because me and you did a sound check this morning, but now I need more monitors here. So it must be, it must be the black folk in here. <laughs> but it's perfect. Just give me a little more monitors. But I'm encouraged more than ever to walk with Jesus. I don't have a sad story. I don't have a woe is me pity party. I don't have that in my spirit. I'm encouraged to walk with Jesus. Yes, I am. I, I heard my mama singing that song a long time ago. And whenever she was going through all kinds of battles, she would stand up at church and she would sing that song, her little short Holy Ghost filled self. I'm encouraged to walk with Jesus. While folk backsliding, while the world is going to hell in a handbasket, while preachers ain't preaching no more, while the members don't want to hear it no more, I'm encouraged more than I've ever been to walk with Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank God for you. I thank God for Jesus Christ who died on Calvary's cross. I thank God for our visitors this morning. I thank God for all of you God's people. I do honor the elders on this morning. You might be seated to the youth pastor, to the ministers, the missionaries. Thank God for them, to our deacons, church mothers, to my lovely wife. I thank God for her. Amen. The first lady of the ministry. 
And brothers, if you don't have an encouraging wife, find you one. Because we've been married 32 years come February. And you have, like the old country folks say, come February, we'll be married 32 years. And I thank God for my wife, amen, who has stuck with me from business to ministry, and she's going to always be. I got two sons, a daughter-in-law and a granddaughter, but my wife will always be my best and most trusted member. I started to play something for y'all uh, 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 of, of a white pastor preaching in Charlotte, and he talked about our church, and he talked about the times in which we live. And I'm more encouraged now than I've ever been. But I'm going to tell all of you something. Don't backslide in church. Y'all hear what I'm telling you? Don't backslide in church. People are backsliding. Don't backslide in church. Don't come just to be coming. But build your relationship with the Lord. This is why gimmicks and tricks and things like that don't work. This is why food trucks and the sweatsuits and all the games and the gimmicks don't work. Because as soon as the devil shows up, you need power. You don't need Roscoe's chicken and waffles. You don't need Kirk Franklin singing. You need the word of God. Because where we're heading now as a nation and as a world, if you are not rooted and grounded in Christ, you are done. It's going to be the word of God that brings us out. We're doing something different. So to my YouTube crowd, whenever the choir sings and I get up, this is when we're going to start streaming. I've talked to the musicians, the choir, and everybody, and we want to shorten uh, the service a little bit for the viewers. So for those viewers that are getting it late, we're probably at least 45 minutes later than normal, but we will start streaming between 11.15 and 11.30 when the, last, uh, when the choir sings their second selection. After that, we would then go into the service. Amen. We've been, we've been talking about doing it for a long time, and that's why we're implementing it now. I know some of you have been watching the broadcast. Say, oh, they're not even on today. Oh, we're here live and in person and in color. <laughs> the Lord is good. <laughs> the Lord is good. I, I, I've been through hell and high water. But when you raise like I'm raised, you just talk about it a little bit and you move on. Got news this morning, my first cousin that, that testified right there. She went on and hopefully she went on to be with the Lord this morning. She died early this morning. I talked to my cousin, Alonda, passed this morning. Uh, you, know, you, you know, but hopefully everything was settled in her spirit with the Lord. She's the one that testified uh, last year when she came. But, you know, you don't know. You don't know. People get sick like that and go to the hospital and you're dead because you, you got something in you that you didn't even know was there. This is why I try to make things right, because you never know who's going to leave here. We're all waiting on the rapture, but let me tell you something. You might die before the rapture comes. <laughs> so thank God I got that news this morning, but the Lord is good. He's still sitting on the throne. Amen. The Lord is good and worthy to be praised. Thank God for all of you God's people for coming to the house of the Lord. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. I don't know about y'all, but I don't want to be anywhere else on Sunday. Vacations and time off don't turn me on on God's day. I enjoy being in the house of visiting family on God's day don't turn me on. I believe in being in the presence of the Lord because today is the Lord's day. It ain't family day. It ain't preseason football day. It ain't NFL day. It ain't baseball day. It ain't ESPN day. It's the Lord's day. And I wouldn't want to be anywhere else other than gathered in the house of the Lord on his day. What a mighty God we say. Heaven and earth are doing. And angels bow down before him. What a mighty God we serve. I want to speak to the visitors after. I want to shake your hand, meet you right over here. That means all my members, God bless you. I've shaken your hand before. So I want to speak to the visitors. Thank you all for coming and being with us. Amen. And I want to say to our visitors, if anybody say anything out of the way to you, brother, you have permission to slap them. Sister, you have permission to slap them uh, because you come to hear a word from the Lord. And I have mean members that have made it their business over the years to say things out of the way to run people off. So I have to address it like this. 
because people come to the house of the Lord for a word from the Lord, not to be mothered or fathered from somebody who ain't their mother or father. That pastor, why you got to say it like that? Trust me, I'm going to say it just like that exactly. People come to hear a word from the Lord, and there are people set in places that don't want it to grow. We're going to grow. We're going to continue to grow. We're going uh, uh, we to we cutting dead weight. We, hey, look, I was on TikTok, and I was watching. I showed my wife a toenail thing. I just Y'all have to pray for me. I was watching TikTok about 3 in the morning, and I got on this toenail channel where they're getting hangnails out and cutting calluses off. And after they cut all that dead stuff off and the pus run out, and all of that, then the foot can grow. The nail can grow. God has cut back a lot of stuff that we didn't need. You don't understand it, but in order for us to grow, in order for, in order for a tree to grow, it has to be pruned. It has to be pruned. And the word of God will prune. See, people are taking, I miss Sue, is the word of God. He shouldn't have said, he shouldn't have said this, that, the other. The word of God, if I let y'all hear this preacher, this white man, this filled with the Holy Ghost white man out of Charlotte, it'll blow your mind. It'll blow your mind. Matter of fact, it's on your phone. It's on your phone. I send it to my preachers. Give it to Brother David. Let him cue it up so that I can play it right before I preach. So I can play it right before I preach. Amen. Just send it to him, and then uh, you'll play it right before I preach. But let's bless the Lord now by the way of giving. I know I said one thing, preachers. as well. We have those that give online and I want to thank God for your giving. I want to thank God for their online giving. You know the battles that we've fought and the things that we've had to deal with and do we would not be able to do them without tithe and offering without your giving. And I'd like to say that as your pastor, as your man of God, I've always tried to oversee the finances properly and we're not a poor church as a result of it. And I thank God for your giving. Amen. 
Kind Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this offering. We thank you for those that gave. We ask that you continue to bless, continue to open up doors. In the name of Jesus, Lord, rebuke the devourer for their sake. Open up doors. Continue to bless. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Before we go into the word of God, I want you to hear something. Because, see, a lot of times we need to hear it from other places. Not that because he's white, it's right. And I can show you other folk. And, and the one that actually covers me, I can show you that this is how uh, they perceive things now. But it's very important that we understand that the word of God is what we need. This man here don't know me from Adam's cat, as mama would say. Don't know me at all, but he's talking about something that's going on across the world. And the only thing I'm going to play it for is just to tell you, I told you so. And this man don't know me. He has no idea who I am. But listen to the message. This is when you talk about the Holy Ghost. Remember I told y'all this past Wednesday, I said, you can't have a different Holy Ghost than me. Either you have him or I don't, or I don't, you don't. You don't have a different Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is not confused. He's not going to tell you to do this and tell me to tell you that you shouldn't do that. You don't have a personalized Holy Ghost, a personalized Holy Spirit. He's not schizophrenic. He's not going to tell you to go left and then tell me to go right, and we get in a car accident, and both of us laid up in the hospital. Well, the Holy Ghost told me to go left. The Holy Ghost told me to go right. We have to figure out if we had went to the right, we'd be in the crash. And that's the one that got the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost moved systematically this is why you see a lot of those preachers not preaching nothing dressed down trying to be cool they don't have the Holy Ghost but this white man here got the Holy Ghost play, play this play this real quick before I get you to stand and we read the word I want you to see this real quick it's about three minutes say to those young pastors who watch me and there are lots of you that do it I want to say to you you fulfill your ministry I know you're discouraged because your church has changed. Let me tell you something, young man. Everybody's church has changed. People aren't the same anymore. Don't say it, man. Listen. Since this germ paid us a visit, since all of this social stuff has come to light, brother, people aren't the same anymore. People are angry and they're irritated and, and they're quick to fight and quick to say things and quick to split. This is not the same world we had, young pastor. And you don't have the same church you had. They disagree with you. They talk about you. They just up and leave at the drop of a hat. Or if there's another ministry that comes along or a better church, they just up and leave you. Your biggest givers will just walk off and leave you. But you can't let that discourage you. Listen to me, young man. Fulfill your ministry. God didn't call you to preach just because the house is full. And God didn't call you to preach just because your biggest givers are still there. He said, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Preach like an evangelist, rebuke, reprove, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. And just remember this, you may preach and nobody gets saved, but Noah preached 120 years and nobody got saved. And Jeremiah preached. 33 years and nobody got saved. But if you'll be faithful and you'll preach it and you'll do what God has called you to do, there is a great reward for you up in heaven. I'm not finished yet. Hang on. Sometimes you might have to do what Ezekiel did. Ezekiel went down to a valley of dead, dried up bones. The Bible said they were very dry. There was no life. But God said preach. Preach to the four winds. Preach to the north, the east, the south, and the west. And he did. And when he preached, life came into that graveyard. Let me tell you something. You preach it whether they like it or not. You preach it whether they're there or not. You preach it no matter what. Because God called you to preach. And if you'll preach, God's got a great reward, a great crown laid up for you in glory. Say to those young pastors Amen. who watch. Amen. You can go ahead and stop it. Amen. Amen. I just wanted y'all to hear from another ministry, from another, ethnic, another ethnicity who does not know me at all. This is why I tell you to come to church. 
He talked about y'all that don't come to church. This is why I tell you, don't get mad. He talked about y'all to get mad and talk about the preacher. Yeah. This is why I told you, don't leave and don't take your tithe and your gift to another church and you team up together. You heard it from somebody else. Yeah. And if you don't think I have the spirit of God, well, the white man said I do. <laughs> and I'm not even trying to be funny. I started not to show that. But that's the spirit of God and that's the state that we're in now where people do not want to hear the word of God. People don't want to deal with the correction and the word of God. And people are backsliding in church. And they're getting tired of God. And just like he said, they blame the pastor for your falling away. Let us all stand. I have to read the scriptures and we get ready to minister to you. We get ready to minister to you. I wasn't going to play. You know, my mind, my mind, I showed it to my wife and she's like, wow. And I, 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 I said, I'm not going to play it, but maybe I will play it. But I don't know if I need to play it, this, that, and the other. But these are the Holy Ghost filled people, preachers. See, there's a lot of preachers that are still Holy Ghost filled. Then there's a lot of game out there where the churches look like clubs. You don't want to be in those churches. You don't want to be in the church where the pastor's cool, but he wants your woman also. Or where he's cool and, and he wants your husband. There's too much coolness going on and no word being preached. This is why I can't preach anything to tickle your ears. I have to preach something to get you into heaven. And by all means, as he said, they, he said you're agitated and everything bothers you. I don't want to see another sad face in my choir. You sing the songs of Zion. You sit before your face like you've eaten a, grape, a, 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 a grapefruit. Amen. I want to see another sad face because we come to the house of God to be delivered and to be set free. This is not a hospital, as people say. People say the church is a hospital. No, Wake Med is a hospital. My cousin just passed in Cary. Uh, Wake Med is a hospital. Uh, 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 Chapel Hill is a hospital. This is a church. It's not a hospital just to heal the broken. It's for you to be delivered and for you to have a responsibility. But I told y'all, and not that he had to amen me because I have the spirit of God. And I come up under one of the biggest black and the baddest black preacher that is alive today right now. So it ain't like he had to give me no approval. But I told y'all what this virus was doing. I told you that there was a spirit behind this thing. I told you that it was going to make you lazy and not want to come to church. I told you that it had a spirit of strife with it. That man don't know me at all. That's the Holy Ghost. Moving on Holy Ghost field pastors to tell you this ch the church, the body of Christ is in trouble. Somebody told me the other day, he said, D, man, the body of Christ is losing. I said, no, no, no. I said, it's not losing. It's losing. It seems like it's losing battles, but it will not lose the war. Now, it seems like we're losing because we got a whole bunch of buffoonery out here. Amen. Amen. Open your Bibles with me to Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. I just can't get away from what God has been giving me to preach. I got other things that I felt like he wanted me to preach, but I just can't get away. And this is the thing that you do. When you can't get away, you don't try to get away. You do and you give way to God's word. Amen? Do you have Acts chapter 17? Ma'am, it's okay to be seated. You holding the babies. I understand. I always tell the ladies that's holding babies, the women that's having babies, and everything else. Do what you got to do. Take your babies out. Let them use the bathroom. Feed them. Do what you need to do. Um, my, my church mothers and some of the older saints, I don't expect them to stand if they can't. But if you can, rest on your feet. Acts chapter 17. The Bible says in verse 10 and 11. 10 verses 10 through 12. We're going to read it together. The Bible says, verses 10 through 12, the Bible says in verse 10, and the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Therefore, many of them believed also of honorable women, which were Greeks, and of men, not a few. Bible says in verse 11, which is one of my most, one of my favorite passages of scripture in all of the Bible. This is for people who enjoy hearing the word. This is why it's one of my favorite passages of scripture. And those that started off with us in ministry, they know I used to just, just hone on this scripture. Because I was a Berean whenever I was a student of the word. 
listening, and I'm still like a Berean when I hear other men of God preach. But you are supposed to be like the Bereans. The Bible says they were more noble than those at Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. I want to continue in the series. It started out with the falling away and somehow it turned into, it morphed into the word of God. I want to preach from the subject, subject um, in your hearing today, receiving the word of God with eagerness. Receiving the word of God with eagerness. You might be seated. Receiving the word of God with eagerness. This is what we don't see anymore. We see people press their way to church. And see, I, and I talk about it all the time. If y'all tired of it, you just have to be all right. I was raised in the old holiness church where folk didn't have big cars, didn't have no money, but the power of God was flowing. And the only thing they wanted to do was to get to church. I'm telling you, my mother, my aunts, my grandmother and them, they ain't having that. They would walk down the dirt road to Evergreen just for noonday prayer. And they couldn't wait to get to church. We got two car garage, three vehicles, baby seats for our babies. We got everything. And we still can't come. And we still don't have the excitement to come. I'm going to tell you something. I know I got a Wednesday night crowd. I got, I got two members in here. I got two types of members in here. If it make you mad, you leave. Well, you heard the preacher. That would be on you. I got two types of members. I got my Sunday members, and I got my uh, Sunday and Wednesday members. Because for whatever reason, there's a group that don't think the word of God is important on Wednesday night, maybe because it's not who. So I, I'm going to preach in a little bit. I might, I might hoop in a little bit. But Wednesday nights, there's very seldom a time that I hoop. It's just pure teaching. And I'm like, what is so busy that people can't come for an hour on Wednesday night? It's because they don't want to see the word readiness. Man, do you not know? And I know everybody say, but are you different? I am different. Do you not know? I used to live in Fayetteville. And I would drive to Raleigh every Sunday morning and be in 7 o'clock class. I would drive to Raleigh every Thursday night for Bible study, and Bible study started at 7.30. So I would shut down the barbershop and go and drive an hour. Y'all probably say, did you take a shower? No. I go to the back and wash up a little bit and throw on a suit because all preachers and elders wore suits. So I had to prepare. So that means I had to go to the shop with my mindset, here's your suit in the back. Don't get no hair on it. Cover it up because you got to put it on and go hear that word. And I would drive an hour to hear the word for an hour. And then drive back an hour. And then y'all wonder why I'm like I am. Not including Gatsy Rich started it all by making me be in church. And when I hated church and said I would never go, it's in me now. And I'm so glad it's in me. I, I'm so glad it's in me. I got excited this morning just to come and help the brothers with the sound check. I slept good. I, I've been sleeping like a baby this week. I told my wife, I've had the best sleep for three straight days that I've had in years. I slept like a baby. Four nights. Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday, I was up a little bit thinking about the word. And then last night, I didn't sleep good thinking about the word. I didn't have a bad night of sleep. I said, I was talking to the Lord. Now, Lord, you know I'm going to be tired if I don't get some sleep. And then it got to the point I was just sitting there thinking about the word. Then I went to some preachers on my phone, and my wife was asleep. She didn't hear none of the messages. I heard about 10 messages, 10 one-minute messages. I was listening to the preachers preach, and I looked over there. I thought it had got a little loud. She didn't hear nothing. And I told the Lord, I said, Lord, you know if I don't go to sleep, I'm going to be tired. So I said, Lord, about four something, I said, Lord, then it turned into me asking him. I said, Lord, can I go to sleep for another hour? Why couldn't you sleep? Eagerness. Excitement. About being in the house of God. People will use things that the preacher say or the preacher does and this whatever. I heard one of my members told me this week. He said to me, he said, Pastor, I appreciate this church. He said, it don't feel good when you step on my feet. But you step on my feet. People have lost their eagerness to hear. I was talking to 
uh, my, past, my, my cousin the other day, and he said to me, he said, time breeds contentment. He said, you'll find out the ones that stay with you the longest will question you the most. He, he, he said that. He told me last week, me and him talked Wednesday morning. He said, time breeds contentment. He said, people get familiar with you, and they're questioning everything. They no longer see you as a person that can feed them. And when that starts to happen to you, you lose your eagerness, and you lose your ability to hear God's word. And it's a trick of the enemy because we're in the last days where if something blocks you or takes you out, you're done. I'm telling you, no, no cap, as they say. I'm telling you, right now, your soul is on the line. And you can't let one Sunday offending you or two Sundays offending you cause you to start backsliding. Amen. Because you, you, do you know where we're headed? We are in a time now where the body of Christ is taken up for Beyonce. And her song, Church Girl. Beyonce, back it up, shake it like a thotty, spend your money, she going to ride it and everything else. And you got Dorinda Clark of the Clark Sisters saying, y'all leave Beyonce alone. It's in there. But she's on a pale horse trying to mimic revelation. This is how far the church has fallen, specifically the black church. All he do is stand up there and judge. All he do is stand up there and judge. All he do is say this, that, and the other. No, you don't want to live right. It ain't no judgment. It's the word of God. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Two-edged sword, not like a knife with the bottom sharp and the top uh, 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 dull. The top and the bottom. A two-edged sword will cut you. I don't say sword. I say sword. A two-edged sword will cut you going in and coming out. And the Bible says the word of God is sharper than that and it can get in between your bone and your marrow. You can't even get in there with a microscope but the word of God will get all in your mess. And I found out people will leave before you get all in their mess. People don't want to hear God, gospel preaching no more. They don't want to hear gospel preaching no more. And I'm going to tell you, people will take everything you say and apply it to them. You ain't that important. See, when, when, when the word of God goes forth, it finds you. Now, if there's anybody in here right now that ain't found you yet, you ain't saved. Because I've said enough right now to find everybody in here. So don't be sitting over there telling me, he talking about me, he talking about me. I'm talking about all of us. Starting with me. How do you think I feel? And I've been sitting on this word a couple of days, and he dealing with me. I'm glad to get y'all now. Eagerness. Don't lose your excitement. Don't lose your excitement. That's why I sang this song. I'm encouraged. See, see, Jasper, I have to go back to the old songs. This new mess ain't encouraging me now. This new mess ain't encouraging me. Smile. Then 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 smile. Uh, somebody sent me some. Thank you. Thank you, Demetrius. He sent me something about how the children of Israel started worshiping like the Canaanites. A woman preached a message years ago, and she was talking about how the children of Israel started worshiping like the Canaanites. That's what we see with Kirk Franklin and all of them. That's what we see with Snoop Dogg and the Clark sisters and all of them. That's what we see a mixing and mingling, worshiping like the Canaanites, not doing what. And, you know, people have gotten bored with Victory Temple. That's why some have left. They've gotten bored. They want, they want a hip-hop pastor. They want a hip-hop show. They want you to bring in this and fellowship over here and do this and do that. Man, this word, this church is built on the word. I, I'm so thankful that nobody didn't plant me. And I'm so thankful that God gave it to me the way he did. And I'm so thankful we sat around after me and my wife talked. I'm so glad that he gave it to me and told me to gather a few people at the living room table without any musicians, without any choir, without any deacons, without any elders, without any mothers, without a first lady at the time. She was going to become a first lady. But God said, preach the word. At the hotel, at the Holiday Inn Express, where they party all night long, we turned that into a sanctuary. This church has been built on the word. And I told the preachers, I said, I preached to my dogs. A 
blessed to go in my backyard and hoop and preach to my dogs because a preacher wants to preach. You don't want to lose your eagerness. You don't want to lose your excitement. And I, I'm going to go back to the word, but when you lose your excitement in your marriage, when he don't turn you on no more, when she gets on your nerves, I love boxing and the Charlo twins. One of the girls put something out on social media about Jamel Charlo and cussed him out and said he ain't this and he ain't that and he can't afford this house. But they have children together. And I'm sitting there saying, you have a disdain for the undisputed champion who I hope he ain't broke. But how did it go from love to disdain so quickly? Anger, bitterness. Somebody will make you mad at church. Let me tell you something. I'm finding more and more out about folk that cause trouble in this church. You ladies, mind your business. You that are not here today, mind your business. You that are here today and be gone next week, mind your business. It's a bad thing to find out you done had a run in with at least 10 women and you're supposed to be a leader. Don't come to church with anger and bitterness and attitude. Because I'm telling you, if everybody got to go to have the flow of God work, God has used me. This, I said God has used me. I didn't say me. God has used me to raise the dead. It's documented. God has used me to touch the dumb and they talk. It's documented. God has used me to lay hands on those that had cancer and had a few days and they're still here, some of them in service right now. It's documented. I don't want a devil in hell from the pulpit to the choir to the music section to the pews to ruin what God is doing in here. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, a song can't deliver you. At the end of the day, the words of encouragement and welcoming folk can't hear you. It's the word of God. That would deliver you. And it's the anointing of God. That's why I'm encouraged. Now more than ever. I'm encouraged. To walk with Jesus. I'm not losing my excitement. When you deal with the word eager. Eager means a strong desire. It means a want to. When you enter into God's house. As Psalm 104 says. Enter into his gate. With thanksgiving. That's the gate right there, y'all. The gate is open for you. You're supposed to, when you drive up in here, you're supposed to enter into his gate. Say, thank you, Jesus. And then when you park your horse, park your beast, present day, park your car, sports utility vehicle, whatever. Then you enter in his courts with praise. That's when you park and you start to walk. And you're on the ground. The outer court in the Old Testament, you start getting excited. You enter in his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. But no, we got mean muggers, sour puss, face twisted. Come to church with that attitude. And it blow, it messes up everything. It'll stop the flow of God. But I'm so glad that I have not lost my joy. I told my wife, I said, don't lose your joy. Me and her were talking about leadership and how leadership will take your joy. I said, no, we can't lose our joy. Because the joy of the Lord, it is our strength. The joy of the Lord, it is our strength, eagerness. You got to be excited about the word. Oh, man, Paul preached all night long, but we put God on a time limit. Paul preached so long till the man fell, broke his neck. Paul preaching with power, broke his neck and died. Paul preaching with power, raised him up and went back to preaching. I would like to think that that man that fell dead, I would like to think that he came back and said, Paul, whatever you say, I'm going to listen to. Don't lose your joy. Don't lose your thunder. Don't lose your excitement. Oh, I'm an old saint. I've been walking with the Lord for years. I've been preaching for 25. Oh, yes, sir. I've been preaching for 25, been pastor for 16. You see this gray here? I'm an old saint now. I wouldn't trade this for nothing in the world. I wouldn't, I wouldn't let my wife send me to hell. My wife can't send me to hell. My wife can't take me from no fire. 
My wife can't destroy my relationship with the Lord. No, sir. No, I got a, I got a message I've been working on, and I'm going to preach it now sooner than later about the spirit of Jezebel. That some of you women have in here, the spirit of Jezebel, that, and, and Jezebel ain't got nothing to do with lipstick. Jezebel ain't got nothing to do with a short dress. Jezebel ain't got nothing to do with earrings. Jezebel has everything to do with control, manipulation, witchcraft. In a man's ear, he can't breathe. He can't think because you in his ear. He need to put you in your place. Because this is why Joshua said, ask for me in my house. Y'all don't like me now. Joshua, Joshua's wife didn't speak up. Joshua spoke up. His wife didn't have no say so. His wife didn't say nothing. Joshua said, ask for me in my house. Joshua said, ask for me in my house. Well, well but honey, you, get you didn't get to say nothing. Ask for me in my house. We're going to serve the Lord. And if you happen to have one like Job's wife, Bible say that God gave Job a better one. Y'all don't like me. I'm just in the scriptures. I'm just in the scriptures. The Bible says that everybody died. Job's wife looked at him and said, you ought to curse God and die. Job looked at her and said, you sound like the foolish women. And next thing you know, he got a whole new family. It's in there. I appreciate you ladies saying amen because I know it's kind of hard for you, but you get that Jezebel out of you, it won't be hard for you. All you Jezebels that's watching me, all you, all you Jezebels, I'm going to say what I said Wednesday night. The Bible says it is more, follow me now, the Bible says it is better for a man to be on the rooftop. The Bible says it's better for a man to be on the corner of the rooftop than it is to be in a whole big house with a contentious woman. The Bible says it's better for that man to stand right here knowing if he slip, his neck gonna break. The Bible says, it's in Proverbs, the Bible says it's more, it's better for a man to be on the corner of the rooftop than it is to be in a 17,000 square foot house. I was on YouTube last night. I didn't just watch preaching. I watched Slim Thug's new home that he get ready to buy. And uh, that thing is so big. That house is so big. I said, uh, Amy would be like, uh, we can't live in that like that because who's going to clean it up? But it's better to be in a great big house. It's better to be at the corner. Now, if I fall, I used to dunk on people. I played high school and college basketball. I was a bad dude. But I can't, if I fall now, it's going to be a catastrophe. He's going to have to help me. Because right now, this is dangerous to me. Right now, this might as well be three, four stories. Because if I fall right now, I'm going to hurt. I got two bad injured knees. But it's better for me to be in danger right here than it is to be over here with her nagging me. What's your point, Pastor? I said, I ain't going to let nobody separate me from the word of God. Because let me tell you something, brothers. That contentious woman can keep you out of hell. And when you get in judgment line, even if you die at the same time, there ain't nowhere in scripture where it said, Mr. and Mrs. Rich, please stand. And look, you can be up there by yourself. And you say, God, this woman, they can say, depart from me. I never knew you. What are you talking about? I'm talking about not, let, not letting anything. Now, we can flip it. And say, wives, don't let your husband do it. But I'm just saying the scriptures just use that example. But we know that the, it can be applied if you've got a crazy husband. But I'm just reading what the scriptures say. So we don't want to lose our joy. Amen? We don't want to lose our joy. We don't want to lose our eagerness. When we come to church, we want to be excited. Oh, I thank God for those days that I drove from Fayetteville to Raleigh for church. I thank God, you can drop it down one degree, they're fanning in here. I thank God for those days, hallelujah, that I drove up and down 40, hit 95, and then Benson, get on 40. There were places that God met me that I can ride on 40 right now, and the Holy Ghost will touch me because I learned some of those long trips, and I never, not one time, not one time. Ain't none of y'all driving far as I did, except one couple. But I ain't never remember one time my wife complained. 
Not one time when we had them boys who are grown men now did she ever complain. Not one time did she ever hear me say, I'm tired of going. Not one time because I heard that man preach. And I had never heard nobody preach like that. I had never heard nobody put me in check with the word. I had never seen a strong man like that that handled the word that was able to crumble me with the anointed word. I was crumbled big, bad, high, on weed, angel dust, and E and J. Sobered up that morning when I heard the word of God. And I've been running for Jesus <laughs> ever since. Been tired of my body, but have not lost my joy, have not lost my eagerness. In our text, and I'm going to show you what happens when you don't lose your eagerness. I'm going to show you what happens when you don't lose your joy. In our text, we see Paul and Silas. They had just preached in Thessalonica. Several verses, you'll see them um, in Thessalonica preaching. Paul was no joke. Paul wasn't like the preachers that we have now. Paul was no joke. Paul would go from town to town and find a synagogue to preach in. Goes to Thessalonica, finds a synagogue, read verses 1, 2, and 3, finds a synagogue in Thessalonica. This is where he founded another church. Found a synagogue to go in and reason. And the Bible says a legend. See, we have preachers now that don't want to argue God. They don't want to allege they don't want to prove. They will step back and allow. They asked T.D. Jakes about homosexuality. He said, find a church that will, you know, pretty much deal with where you're at. Instead of dealing with what the scriptures say, that homosexuality is wrong. They asked Joel Osteen about homosexuality. He said, well, I have a bunch of gay friends. He said, but God has not called me to condemn anyone, but God has called me to encourage I said, well, that means you can't preach the whole Bible. Because the Bible says, the one I got, the Bible says, Paul tells Timothy, in 2 Timothy, he tells him that the word of God is inspired and it's good for reproof and correction and long-suffering so that the woman or the man, the man or woman of God may be truly furnished, complete. So you're going to hear something that's not going to set well with you. I'm going to tell you, here's the one scripture that don't set well with none of us. But all of us have to humble ourselves to it. If you get slapped, turn the other cheek. Now, how many of y'all like that? Raise your hand and tell a lie so I can slap you. I'm going to prove my point. Raise your hand and say, don't bother me. I'm going to slap you. And I'm going to make you a liar in front of everybody. Because it's going to be a natural reaction when I slap you, whether you can fight or not. You're going to try to do something. And it's going to be hard to sit there and say, the Bible says we would hope that we can hear the word of God. <laughs> Amen. The word of God will correct. And so, so when people say, uh, uh, I don't want to do this and I don't want to do that, don't be so hard, don't do this, that, and the other. You preach the gospel. Paul tells Timothy in season, out of season, when they like it, when they don't like it, when the church is full, when the church is empty. When the money's flowing, when the money's not flowing, when they get mad, when they get glad. Because let me tell you, people will fool you. People will testify on Wednesday and say they enjoy the word. People, that's why I don't let nobody pat me on the back. People will tell you on Fifth Sunday, you're the greatest pastor in the world and thank God for a good first lady so I can look up to. I don't do compliments. They don't move me at all. Matter of fact, I don't believe them. So my job is not to believe compliments. It is to teach and preach the word of God. Paul didn't care. Paul went to Thessalonica, found a synagogue, a Jewish synagogue, went in there and started alleging that Christ is risen. Started debating him for three Sabbaths. That's three weeks. On the Sabbath day, which is Saturday, he was in there appro proving and alleging. He was in there arguing. We don't have enough argument in the saints. 
We don't have enough argumentative saints. And then when you argue like this, they say, well, I can't come back to that church because all he do is argue. I can't come back to that church. I can't do this. I can't do that because all he do is argue. We have to argue and prove who Christ is. You hear me? We have to argue and prove who Christ is. Because right now we don't know what's right and what's wrong. We don't know what's right. We don't know what's wrong. I told y'all about this wicked sin and this wicked disease called monkeypox. I told you about this wicked disease called coronavirus. You go back and hear the tapes if you think that God didn't have me ahead of the game. And now you got homosexual men that have their dog sleeping with them. And the dog licked on them. On Fox News, CNN News, it's real news. You can Google it on your phone right now. The dog lives with a homosexual couple. Lick the homosexual couple and the dog now has monkeypox. I'm not even trying to be funny because the Bible right up under homosexuality talks about bestiality. That's why you see so many dog commercials. People kissing on their dogs, licking on their dogs, sleeping with their dogs. Ain't no dog gonna be laying between me and Amy. And I wake up in the middle of the night, <laughs> moon spot, <laughs> Spitting out of hair. No, sir. Now, all you that got a dog in your bed, God bless you. You ain't got no business with your dog in the bed with you. I don't care if you're single. I don't care what you are. Ain't got no business, no dog in your bed. And I raise dogs. I'm a dog man. I raise the kiddos. I raise pit bulls. I raise American bullies. I raise French bulldogs. But not one of them have laid his head on my pillow. <laughs> Wickedness. Nobody wants to talk about sin. Everybody wants to talk about a feel-good message. Paul went in there and said, Jesus is Lord. And let me tell you, Paul's preaching made him mad. Paul went in there, told them that Jesus was Lord, that Jesus was raised from the dead, and they came after Paul and Silas. Bible says they came after Paul and Silas trying to get him, and they went to Jason's house. Went to Jason. Y'all come on up front, my elder. Y'all come on up front. Don't sit in the back. Hey, man. Hey, listen. They, they, they sat there and, and, and went to Jason's house. Jason covered them. It's always good to have somebody. That's why I said come on up. It's always good to have somebody in town that can don't know you naturally, but in spiritually they recognize and they'll hide you in their house. That's what happened to me. That's why I said he can't ever come late and sit at the back because he's been good to me and his counterpart, Deacon McNeil, has been good to me when I came to this area and didn't know nobody. They were good to me. Never sit at the back. I don't care if you come in two minutes left. Come on up. They went into Jason's house. Ain't that, ain't that amazing how that time it was? Paul and Silas preaching. Jason hides them. Jason, a man of God, that believed the word of God. Because the Bible says after Paul alleged that Jesus was risen, many people started believing. They go to Jason's house trying to find Paul and Silas. That's good preaching, y'all. It's good preaching when people get mad. They went to Jason's house trying to find Paul and Silas. And the Bible says when they couldn't find Paul and Silas, they put Jason in jail. This word will cause you to be ridiculed. They put Jason in jail and tried to find out where Paul and Silas were. Couldn't find out where they were. The Bible says that after the bail was paid, y'all don't believe me, do you? It, it, it says in verse, uh, uh, it says, let's go back to verse 7, whom Jason had to receive and these all do conscience. Let's, matter of fact, let's back up to verse 6. Matter of fact, let's back up to verse 5 because I'm preaching this, but I got to teach it the right way. So we see Paul and Silas teaching and preaching on three Sabbath days in Thessalonica at the synagogue. The Bible says a great multitude were saved, the Greeks and a great multitude and chief women, not a few, very important, powerful women. They always played an important, powerful role in the formulation of the church. The Bible says, but the Jews, somebody say but. There's always somebody that's going to go against the program. But the Jews, which are, we call Judaizers, which believe not, moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows. People will kill you for preaching the word. Took low down lewd fellows of the baser sort and gathered a company and set all the city on an uproar and assaulted the house of Jason and assaulted the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. You get in trouble for this, God, for this gospel. 
You get, people don't want to get in trouble for the gospel no more. People are afraid to get in trouble for the gospel. I want everybody to go home and find your favorite TV preacher and see if he or she preached anything today that's going to cause an uproar. Huh? Because the world we live in now, how can you find somebody that's telling you you're going to get a new car every week? You're going to get a new job every week. You're going to get a new promotion every week. Oh, you're going to have this. The world is yours. When we don't know how much longer this world is going to last. I'm telling you, I know God's Holy Spirit. I know his anointing. I, 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 thank, I tell him all the time, I thank God that he speaks to me. No man can do this except the Lord be with him. I don't have nothing special about me that can get this kind of power other than God anointing me. And I'm obedient to him. And I'm going to preach his gospel. But it'll get you in trouble. People get mad when the word comes forth. It should upset you. It should make you feel better. It is for correction. It is for long suffering. It's not to make you feel good. The word is not to make you feel good. The word is to get you to heaven. The word is to get you to heaven. It ain't nothing else other than to get you to heaven. The word is to get you to heaven. The word is to get you to heaven. Somebody say, I want to go to heaven. Somebody say, I want to go to heaven. Do you want to go to heaven? I want to go to heaven. I don't want to die in my sins. I, I want to go to heaven. My cousin died this morning. I pray her soul was right with the Lord. Because when you leave, it's final. There's going to be funerals and days of visiting the next several days. But it's over. We can say what we want to say. We can put up pictures. We can do whatever we want to do. But it's over. It's over. And when it's over, it's over. When it's over, it's over. And I want to die and go to heaven. I ain't got time to play. I don't have time to play DJ and Adrian and think I got a death wish. I ain't, I ain't got a death wish. I want to live and enjoy my grandbabies and my sons and my daughter-in-laws and all that. But I ain't trying to go to hell while I'm enjoying it. I'm trying to go to heaven. The Bible says that they took men of the baser sort and went out and arrested Jason. And look what the Bible says about the preachers. This is what a preacher is supposed to be doing. Verse 6, And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, check this out, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. I heard my pastor preaching this years ago. He said they didn't turn the world upside down. They turn the world right side up. See, whenever you preach like this, people get mad and say, oh, he's staying up trouble. But what is there to like about homosexuality? What is there to like about racism? What is there to like about adultery? What is there to like about fornication? What is there to like about thievery? What is there to like about sin? You can have a big crowd and go along with them. Or you can preach the gospel, get them saved, and you go to heaven. Because I found out that the only mansion that's going to be in heaven is the one that Jesus is preparing for me. Don't care what I buy on this side. It cannot go with me. Somebody say amen. It said these be the ones who turn the world upside down. These be the ones who have messed up our pretty little party. These be the ones that want to come in my church Whenever it's okay to be homo, it's okay to be racist, it's okay not to talk about sin. I know pastors that have told me they will not talk about sin. I said, well, you don't have a church. Because the only thing Jesus talked about was sin and greediness. Jesus talked about sin and he talked about money. He didn't talk about money, money come unto me. But he talked about money and how it was corrupt. And how people love money. Money is sending people to hell left and right. Money has the preacher where he won't preach. But I'm so glad that I didn't get money when I started preaching. I'm so glad that God didn't make me no money promises. He just said, preach my word. And I'm like Paul. I, I, I'm so glad that he thought me faithful enough to put me in the gospel. I know that I'm not worthy. I know that I don't deserve it. But since he put me here, since he allowed us to start in the living room and go to the hotel 
and 300 Rogers Street and now at 1000 Wagstaff. I'm so glad that he allowed me to preach his gospel. Many have come and many have gone, but I stay steady on God's word. My wife told me, gave me a high compliment. She said, people can leave. People can say what they want to say. She said, but one thing they can't say about you is that you have not preached the word. And I'm talking to you now about the word of God. Is there anybody in here that loves the word of God? Is there anybody in here that still enjoys coming to church and hearing God's word, knowing that if you apply this word, apply it right now, apply it this evening, apply it tomorrow, it's gonna change your life. Well, the Bible says that they let Jason go and Paul and Silas had to slip away in the midnight hour. They had to slip away from Thessalonica. Just imagine preaching, fellas. All we got to do now is come up here and hear the microphone. Do a sound check. Have an organ to back us. Have a choir to sing. And people that act like they like it. But what if we had to leave late in the night and go from one place to another? Would we still preach the gospel knowing our lives are being threatened because of this gospel? A lot of things have happened to me. Family has left. Friends have left. My life has been threatened but I ain't suffered like these men of God so I believe I'll keep on preaching I believe I'll keep on teaching I believe that I'll keep on trusting in the God that brought me this far some have left some have stayed but whatever you do I've decided to make Jesus my choice no longer bound by sin but I've decided that I'm going to preach no matter what happens the Bible says that they slipped away and they went from Thessalonica into Berea went to another place even though their lives were threatened they weren't afraid to leave Thessalonica but they brought that same power somebody say same power that same anointing they brought it from Thessalonica over into Berea and here's where you played a part here's where you played a part are you gonna be a Thessalonican saint are you gonna be a Berean saint are you gonna be the kind of wine and wine and wine and cause trouble and wine and mean mug and shut down and wine every week there's something else wrong every day there's something else wrong every message there's something else wrong can't satisfy you are you gonna be like that are you gonna be like a Thessalonican saint are you gonna be like a Berean for the Bible says that Paul and Silas they slipped away by night unto Berea and the Bible says put it up on the screen and the Bible says somebody say the Bible says let me hear your preaching voice and the Bible says let me hear the preacher say it and the Bible says that when when they went to Berea that they started to preach just like they did in Thessalonica but these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all somebody say all all of me all all of me Lord I yield myself as an empty pitcher before a full fountain when you come to church you should be empty 
when you come to church you should be willing when you come to church you should be eager you should be ready your mind should be made up your heart should be fixed when you walk through those doors you ought to be shaking your head giving high five say man it's good to be here I come to hear words. Say, brother, it's good to see you. Howdy, howdy, we're in God's house. Sister, how you doing? The Lord's gonna bless in here today. Musicians, how you feeling? Cause I'm gonna need you. Cause there's gonna be an explosion up in here about 1220. So when we get our minds right, when we get our hearts right, when we don't lose the eagerness, we can receive from the Lord. And when we receive, when we receive his word, somebody say blessings. Blessings are going to come your way when you receive his word this is why it says faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God not your testimony not how the devil has been beating you up but when you hear the word of God your faith shall grow and the things that God has sent for you that week. The Bible says that God will, that God will, that God will watch over his word. Feel the freedom now. I tried to tell y'all, feel the power up in this place. The sink has been and now the Holy Ghost can have his way. Shout yeah! Shout yeah! The Bible says in Isaiah 55, 11 and 12, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it God sent you a word today through his word and we serve a God that watches over his word I hear him telling Isaiah, in Isaiah, I hear him telling Jeremiah, in Jeremiah 1 and 12, I watch over my word to perform it. So you know what that means? Do you know what that means? That means you receive God's word with eagerness. How many came here today ready to receive God's word? with eagerness how many receive God's word with eagerness well if you received it he's watching over it to perform it so whatever you need whatever you need from the Lord right now I mean his word you shall be the hand and not the tail you shall live and not die. I'm here to tell you that we serve a God that watches over his word. His word is going to bring you out. His word is going to deliver you. His word is going to break the yokes. You ought to just wave, wave your hand and tell the Lord thank you. Wave your hand and tell the Lord thank you. 
his word, his word, the devil thought it had me, but I heard his word. The word said, preach in season, preach out of season, preach when they like you, preach when they don't like you, because I found out that when I threw my anchor, deep and I trusted him the wind may blow breakers may dash but his word somebody say his word somebody say his word somebody say his word you should have zoomed out you should have zoomed out and got all the preachers zoom out look at all the preachers making me preach like I done lost my mind we ain't having all the call. But they came up here to push me. Preachers, elders, deacons, brethren, saying, preach pastor, preach pastor. You've encouraged me. Now let me encourage you. Everything that you're going through, God has given you a word that you're going to be able to come out I'm not going to promise you this that you're going to come out today I don't know when and I don't know where but my soul is anchored and your soul has to be anchored in the Lord we've been made and do for a night but all joy somebody say joy Say good morning, neighbor. Say good morning, neighbor. Good morning, neighbor. Good morning, neighbor. Everything is gonna be all right. Cause his word says so. Hallelujah. 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 His word. The word of God. I got to stop. I got to stop. The word of God. How many believe that his word is going to answer your situation? How many believe that his word is going to come to your house, to your address? How many believe that there's something in God's word for your life? How many believe that his word is gonna bring you out? That his word is gonna work it out for your good? His word, the word of God. When you receive, when you receive, his word with eagerness. Let me let y'all in on a secret. That's why the Lord has blessed this ministry. That's why the Lord has blessed me. Because I was always eager to hear what my pastor had to say. He rebuked us sometimes. He rebuked us more times than not. But I was eager because that's what I needed. I was rough around the edges. I was in all kinds of sin. And he told me, come out, or you're going to die and go to hell. He didn't tell me nothing about no money. He didn't tell me that everything was going to be all right. But he said, young man, if you don't change your way, you're going to lift up your eyes in a sinner's hell. And because he told me that, and I got real legal, and every Thursday, and every Sunday, I sat there in front of him, ready to hear a word. And I can stand here and say, 20 some years later, 30 years in September, that my life has been better because of his word. His word. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right where you stand. Right where you stand. I'm not going to do an altar call. But y'all don't move. Right where you stand and right where the crowd is. I'm going to pray right now. And we get ready to go home off of his word. Let me tell you something about the word of God. When you receive it with eagerness, as Jeremiah 1 and 12 says, he told Jeremiah, I will watch over my word. See, everybody want to talk about the books that's been taken out, the Bible, this, that, and the other. We know books have been taken out. But God is watching over his word. And he told Jeremiah, I'm watching over it to perform it. If you've received the word, whether it was today, Wednesday, last Sunday, five years ago, God is watching over his word to perform what he said he's going to do in your life. When you come to church with an eager spirit, a spirit of expectation, an outstretched neck, my wife, y'all don't really pay attention to her, but that girl that lays in the bed with me at night, do you hear what she says when she stands up here? And I've never said this from the pulpit, and I've never said it to her. My wife is eager to hear a word from her husband, the pastor, and man of God. I've never mentioned it, but that's been my little secret between me and God when she stands in here and says, I know there's a word from the Lord. The Lord has never, it'd be looking pretty while she said it. I'd be looking at her from the side. And I'd be like, oh, go on, say it, girl, say it. Say it, girl, say it. And she said, she said, she said, what did she say? She said, come to church. We come to hear a word from the Lord. And I'm like, thank God with all that she hears. Because I can bring it to you. So I know who I am. I, I know my flaws and I know everything else. You better know yours. And I'm like, I, I, I have bogged her down with a lot of stuff. But she's smiling right there. Don't look like she's been through nothing. And I said, I come to hear a word from the Lord today. And you know, enjoy the Lord. The Lord has been blessing us. Always come wanting to hear a word. Since the time I got saved, I can honestly say, no matter if it was at a funeral, no matter if it was at my former church, no matter if I was visiting somewhere else, I've always, when the preacher gets ready to get up, there's a certain thing that I do. I never come here on fourth Sunday just to critique only because God called these preachers and I come to hear a word even for the preacher that can't preach there's something in there he or she can say and I always set myself up for success by opening up myself with eagerness to receive the word well that same word says you're going to be healed that same word says you're going to be delivered that same word says you're going to be set free that same word says that you're the head and not the tail. That same word says that he'll bring you out. That same word says that your ladder shall be better than your former. That same word says it. So right where you stand, I want you to put on your mind what you need from the Lord. Give you 30 seconds to put on your mind. God is not a genie that you rub the bottom. But treat it almost as if you have one desire, one wish. Put that thing that's heavy on your heart and on your mind. Give it to God right now. And while you're thinking about that, there's a word for you. There's a word for your situation. There's a word. There's a word for you. There's a word for your situation. No matter what it is, the Lord will perform it. Then he tells Isaiah, Isaiah 55 and 11. He says to Isaiah, and he goes in 10, 9 and 10, talking about his ways are above our ways, his thoughts are above our thoughts. And he says, my word goes out and it accomplishes what I sent it out to do. And it will never return unto him void. Victory Temple is a product of God not Pastor Rich and it will always achieve no matter whether we're here or not because it's God's word there are things that God put in your life that he wants to bring to pass Father in the name of Jesus touch your people right now 
Lord, we've heard your word. We've heard your word. We've heard your word. Some are sick in their bodies. Some are lonely. Some are barren. Some are broken. Some are at a crossroad, whether to stay saved or not. Some are divorced. Some are separated. Some don't have peace. Lord, I pray right now that you touch these, your people. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you touch every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. I ask that you heal hurt that this church has suffered. I ask that you heal pain and let us move forward in the things of God. Lord, I ask that you touch right now. Touch our children. Touch our spouses. Touch those that are in the womb. Those that have not been born yet. Those that are born the new babies. Touch them, oh God. Touch everything that pertains to us. In the name of Jesus. In your word, we can find our situation. In your word, they can find their situation. Heal their bodies. Touch their minds. Touch their finances. Touch their relationships. Touch the hurt. Touch the bitterness. Touch the unforgiveness. Lord, anything that stops us from being who you called us to be, touch right now. In the name of Jesus, touch right now. Touch right now. Have your way. Have your way. Lord, some are bowing down on their knees. Some are standing with their hands raised. Some are sitting with babies. Lord, we ask that you answer our prayers and show us in your word the encouragement that we need until that change comes we're going to wait on you we're going to wait on you we love you Lord we thank you right now we're going to wait on you we're going to wait on you though though it tarry wait on it though it tarry write the vision make it plain though it tarry wait on it though it tarry wait on it write the vision make it plain though it tarry wait on it Wait on it. And it'll come to pass. Your dreams, your ideas, your goals, I'm telling you, I'm speaking what thus said the Spirit of God. Trust the Lord. Lean not to thine own understanding. Trust in Him. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge Him. And He'll direct your path. You need direction. He'll direct your path. He'll direct your path. He'll direct your path. That word was from somebody specifically. He will direct your path. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for the sweet spirit that's in this place. We thank you now. We thank you now. We thank you now. We magnify you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Have thine own way. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can go to your seats praising the Lord. I want to thank my YouTube crowd as we get ready to go out there. Thank you. Thank you that continue to support us. Thank you for watching, tuning in. I want to say like, share, do what you got to do. We will start Facebook live streaming soon too. I'm not worried about the comments or none of that. So we got to master that. And uh, we're going to need some help back there in the booth. Stephen is gone. Isaiah is gone. Stephen's back in school. Isaiah is gone. And we're going to need somebody to volunteer from time to time. You don't have to do it every Sunday. Somebody volunteer to help out. Amen. With that area. We have two back there now, three back there now. And we're doing a tremendous job. But I do want to do the Facebook live stream as well. And I want you to tell folk about this word. And we've shortened, we've shortened the video production so that people can get it within an hour or so. I think it's probably going to be about an hour and 15 minutes actually on YouTube. We thank God for our choir who sings stronger than ever. We thank God for our musicians who play better than ever. But these are things that they wanted to do uh, for a while. And I talked to other people about doing it. We just wanted to shorten some things. And really just get to the word of God. Please come out and visit Victory Temple Ministries located at 1000 Wagstaff Road. 
If you're quavering in North Carolina, 27526. And we want to grow, and we're going to grow. And God's going to bless us. And we're going to do mighty works in the name of the Lord. We have our after-school program that's getting ready to get started for the middle schoolers within the next month. And the Lord is good. We've got that going. And continue to pray for me as I pray for you. God bless you.